Hello guys, it is I Tall Slenny, and I'm sorry if you can hear my cat purring. He just won't leave me alone. But regardless, today I'm going to be talking about Invader Zim while drawing Invader Zim. Very shocking, I know, but um you you see I'm about to go on a trip and I won't be able to make videos for a while, so I figured I'd make a very easy one just to get it out of the way. And what better than to talk about my favorite show on earth, Invader Zim. Um, I feel like I've only ever said I love this show, but never really explained why, so that's what this video is for. And without further ado, let's begin. Let's start with its origins. Invader Zim was created when Nickelodeon asked Joan and Vasquez to make a show for them, which a lot of people think is pretty wild considering, you know, they hired the guy who made Johnny the Homicidal Maniac and Squee to make a children's show, but you also have to remember it was the 2000s and things were a lot edgier in the 2000s than I'd say any other time, really. I mean, I wasn't alive for most of it, but... Look at Batman 2004. I just think Edge was becoming very mainstream during this time, and Invader Zim just seemed like a good way to get that in, even though, you know, we can argue whether or not it was really appropriate for kids. There were a lot of dark scenes in this show. A lot of people point straight to Dark Harvest, but do any of you guys remember the time that Zim was giving fast food for, like, the workday episode, and then he just explodes? But also, I feel like a lot of people dismiss the show as just being shock value and having random lol XD humor, when in reality, that only really applies to Gurr. I mean, the show is edgy overall, but also, a lot of the jokes were meant to be critical of humankind, and they fit right in place with the universe of it. Speaking of Gurr being the only one with random XD lol humor, he essentially became the mascot of Hot Topic, and I'm very mad that he's the one with the most merch when he's not even the main character Invader Zim is. Like, I have a keychain that has a lot of characters from the show on it. It has Zim, it has Dib, it has Gaz, and then there are two for Gurr. Two! One where he's just in his robot form with, like, the dog hoodie down, and then another where it's just the dog form riding a pig. Give the other characters more love! Forget Tumblr. Anyway, rant aside, that that was going to be its own video earlier in the year, but I figured that it'd be a little bit too much just to rant about the merchandise of Invader Zim for one video. Anyway, more about the show itself. I love Invader Zim. I think the most unique thing about this show that makes me love it so much is the dynamic. Zim, who wants to destroy Earth, is our protagonist. And, you know... He's very clearly evil, but we follow him in his struggles, and I like that a lot. But also, Dib, despite trying to save Earth itself, is seen as the antagonist, and no one really believes him. I mean, no one really believes in Zim either. And I think the fact that they both have similar, I guess, flaws or hurdles they have to get over is also very poetic. Zim just wants to prove himself to the tallest. Dib just wants to prove himself to everyone around him. He wants someone to like him, and he wants Earth to be safe overall. And if he has to capture this alien and out him to everyone to do it, then he will. And if Zim has to destroy Earth to get any praise from the tallest, he will. It's like a force of evil and good, and both of them have the same goal, but... You don't want either of them to win or lose because you like both characters, and I felt like if this show f solely followed Dib, it'd be harder to understand that because Dib pretty ruthlessly goes after Zim. He doesn't give a second thought as to what Zim is thinking, he just knows that Zim is trying to destroy Earth and he needs to stop him at all costs. I think it makes the moments when we do finally focus on Dib that much more impactful. Because he does have his handful of episodes in the show, but then the movie is mainly about Dib's emotional struggles. Don't get me wrong, both Zim and Dib share the spotlight pretty evenly, but it's pretty clear the emotional emphasis is on Dib's storyline. Anyway, the real reason I think I'm so attached to the show is because I relate to Invader Zim a lot. And I'm very aware that Invader Zim is supposed to be cynical of humankind in a very cat-and-mouse show, but still, I related a lot to Invader Zim, and I guess everything I'm about to say could be applied to Dib too, but as a kid, I always felt like I was a weirdo growing up, like I was an outcast, and if I had to make any friends, then I'd need to change things about myself in order for people to like me. Much like how Zim has to disguise himself when he's around the humans so they obviously don't find out he's an alien and, you know, ruin his entire goal of being there. 
I just related to Zim's perspective because sometimes I felt like I was the alien weirdo who knew nothing about Earth and couldn't understand why the world was the way it is or why humans act the way that they do. And I just felt seen by his character, even though I know that probably wasn't the intention. It just meant so much for me to see him. It just overall made me feel less alone and like I wasn't the only person who struggled with trying to be myself. Beyond my emotional ties to this show, though, I think it just does world building better than any other sci-fi thing. Like, I have such a hard time getting into fantasy anything, whether it be Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, any of those things, just because they talk so much about the landscape and the way the world works. It's like, show not tell, please. I think Invader Zim is a perfect example of this, because they don't have to explain everything to you. It's just like, the show prioritizes humor and Zim trying to do the most wackiest things and inventions he can think of, and then world building is more like in the background, or you'll find more of it in the comics if you really want to seek those out. Speaking of the comics, I love the comics. They influence my style so much, and I just think they're great, even though they're very different from the original vibe of the show. The same can be said for the movie as well, because the movie takes a lot of inspiration from the first issue of the comics, both story-wise and art style-wise. And I believe in an interview for the movie, someone said, oh, this art style is based off of how it felt like to be a viewer of Invader Zim in the 2000s. To which I have to say, did we watch the same show? Like, yes, both styles are very geometric, and they both obviously feature Joan and Vasquez's shape language and the designs, but... The colors are completely different. It's like day and night when you compare the color theories. And they even updated Gaz's design a lot, which I'll be honest, I prefer the original Gaz's design, but it's also nice to see them in the movie style as well, especially with the way the styles shift a lot during the beginning and the end. It's amazing to look at. But speaking of the movie, I think I did a review of the movie when it originally came out and that video was kind of old, but regardless, I just want to say that allegedly the movie was supposed to be a reboot TV show for Invader Zim instead, but the budget was not big enough, so they decided to do a movie instead as a last big hurrah. Which makes me sad because, you know, I'm pretty sure the comics have already ended and the movie was in 2019. And Joan and Vasquez has been very busy since then with, like, TMNT and other stuff. And it makes me wonder when the next time we're gonna see Invader Zim is. It might be years, but also, every time Invader Zim has come back, it's been good, or at least consistent quality. So, I hope that if they ever bring it back again, it won't be bad, unlike other remakes people make. Regardless, though, I learned a fun fact recently. Did you know that when it comes to the original Invader Zim episodes, each episode would have a budget of at least one million? Compare that to the viewership of the episodes, and it makes complete sense why the show was unfortunately canceled so early. Like, that is a lot in the 2000s. 1.2 million in the 2000s is a lot. And, like, I knew there were budget issues before because of the limited use of 3D and how they expressed they wanted to use it more, but instead only used it in the shots where they really felt like they needed to. But I didn't know it was that bad, man. Jeez. Anyway, it makes me wonder what it would have been like if Invader Zone was a longer-running show like Danny Phantom or Fairly Odd Parents or Spongebob. Because... Minnie Moose just appears out of flippin' nowhere, and they acknowledge it in the Christmas episode, like, and here's Minnie Moose, he's been here the entire time. And one of the creators explained the reason why Minnie Moose just popped up out of nowhere was because they only had a budget from one more episode, and they felt like getting the Christmas special was more important than trying to introduce Minnie Moose or any other plot points that would never be satisfied. So Minnie Moose just pops out of flippin' nowhere, and to be honest, I think he pops up pretty abruptly in the comics, too. And it's just... The... Minnie Moose is a wild character. Like, I have no real feelings about Minnie Moose just because he appears out of nowhere and is just kind of, like, acknowledged as, oh, he's been here the whole time, right, Minnie Moose? And he does basically nothing but sit there and be cute, which is a lot like Gur's role, but Gur is at least very chaotic. Either way, though, I, like, I know Minnie Moose was one of the major plot points in the movie. He still doesn't have much of a character outside of just being cute and floaty. Regardless, though, I really like Invader Zim. I think Invader Scooge is an underrated character. He only shows up, like, twice in the entire show, 
no one really, like, I'm pretty sure he shows up in the comics. I just haven't gotten up to the issue where he's been introduced, I think. But also, I, I just I just need to show you some of my favorite panels from the comics. I, I just have to. Like, look at this one. This is the outfit Zim chose when he decided he needed to get a loan from a bank for something. And then this panel, I don't know if enough people know about it, but I think that they should. This is the panel where Zim spits into a space pool. It makes a little clone of him. And then the henchman he had befriended earlier kills the clone. And Zim's expression is just like, eh, well, that happened, huh? It is wild. Wild. I love the comics. I haven't seen that much of the comics because I only have so much money and I only have so many issues. But still, that was that was a moment where I officially lost my stuff. I lost my mind. And I'm starting to blank on what other things I could talk about. So I'm going to talk about the drawing in the background. Um, yeah. I did a thumbnail for both Gaz and Dib. I lost the Gaz and Dib one. I recreated it, though, so maybe I'll include that speed paint in another video. But yeah, I just felt like doing a dynamic pose with Zim and finally showing off his pack because I realized that I don't show off his pack in many of my drawings. And despite my frustrations towards Gur being the most merchandisable person in the entire show, I did decide that my cat is meowing, but I did decide that Gur deserved a little bit better than the way I had been drawing him previously. So, yeah, I'm adding very cool glowy effects, it's very comic booky, and I'm gonna let my cat out now. I'm very proud of this drawing, and thank you guys for listening to me ramble about Invader Zim for however many minutes long this is. Almost 12, the way that I'm seeing it. Anyway, Thank you guys so much for watching, have a good day, morning, night, whatever time it is when you're watching this, and just have a good time. Goodbye, and I'll see you guys later.